Hi there, friends. Welcome back. My name is Aura. I am your crypto astrologer, but today I don't really want to talk about crypto. Wait, I want to talk about beingness versus havingness and the value of beingness over havingness. But first, let's talk about havingness. I am giving away two copies of the Crypto Timing Report, which has been very accurate. I have called every single peak in the crypto market over the past year. So all you need to do to win that is make a comment and be a subscriber. So it's pretty easy. Just make a valuable comment. You know, obviously trolls aren't going to win, but if you're a subscriber and you make a comment, then um, you can win. Like, share, and subscribe, of course. Uh, but you need to, uh, sh and also share the video. I mean, I'm not going to, you you know, I can't tell if you did or not, but um, so that's a giveaway. I will be giving two copies of that away. And also next month I will be giving away some XRP Ripple, which we all know is going to go on a big giant tear, a massive run. So, um, and I will be talking about that out here on YouTube. I will be talking about timing on Ripple because it's going to be very touch and go. And I want something to give to the public here, to everybody. So I will talk about Ripple. So I'm going to give it away also. So let's talk about beingness versus havingness. So first of all, you know, as we talk about crypto, we are, we go into crypto wanting with the idea of having this, right? If we're going to have a lot of money because we bought crypto and it's going to make us rich. So it's going to give us whatever we think that wealth will bring to us, right? The havingness of it, the abundance of things, of uh, properties, homes, you know, good food, uh, beautiful clothes, uh, the lifestyle we dream of, yachts, airplanes, whatever we are dreaming of. So there's nothing wrong with that, right? I'm not saying anything is wrong with having stuff. We actually, that's part of what the benefit of being on the earth school is, is that we can learn to manifest to us the things that we want. But beingness is how we have the havingness. So we have to be in the right beingness in order to attract the havingness. So that's really what I want to talk about. But the, um, What's interesting to me is that uh, as I was kind of thinking about this video and, and talking about this subject, I had a couple of conversations come up where the name Siddhartha cropped up. Siddhartha is Buddha, right? So, uh, but he was Buddha when he was a young man, when he was a seeker. So if you see Buddha statues, there are some of the pictures of him where he's a young man and he has this different kind of head piece on. And then when he's Buddha, he's, you know, round bellied Buddha that everyone is familiar with. So there's different versions of the Buddha that you can see in statues. Now I am not particularly Buddhist, although I have found a lot of great value in the teachings of Buddha on a very practical, physical level, because there's a lot out there about the law of attraction that just says, think good thoughts and you'll get what you want, right? But there's a big um, major obstacle to that. And that is that we all have subconscious programming. Unless we had a perfect childhood, and I don't know anyone who did, then we are going to have belief systems and issues come up that trip us up on the way. And so the tools that um, Buddha and the breathing techniques of Buddhism and Ayurveda are very, very powerful for clearing that stuff out of the way, some of which gets stuck in our body as physical limitations and obstacles and becomes disease and illness at times. So it's very valuable to learn to clear that stuff out. So there are actual practical techniques and useful things that we can do that will remove the obstacles or help us clear the obstacles. Those obstacles exist for a reason and we on a spiritual level needed them or need them in order to grow and learn and evolve. So the point about Siddhartha and how that came up in several conversations was very interesting because I, I wound up in a conversation with someone who had said something about reading Siddhartha when he was in high school. And I, as that's pretty unusual because, and I remembered that I had taken a class on Siddhartha when I was in high school, pretty odd that they would teach a class. It's a philosophy class or philosophy 
a professor came and taught at my high school. I think I was a freshman when they offered that class. And I was one of like 15 people in the school who <laughs> took the class. It wasn't a big school, but I felt really lucky to get to um, take that class. And um, this guy asked me, what was my memory? What was my biggest takeaway from it? And it was a while ago, so I didn't really like remember the book that well. But what I remembered was that it was about a young man who felt like he didn't belong and went out to seek where he belonged and what he, <clears throat> what, what his purpose was. And each of us can resonate with that because on some level, we all have to find our deeper meaning and our deeper purpose in life, right? So my life is good because I'm in my purpose, right? I live my purpose and I'm, I'm generally happy and I have good things going on. It's not that the masks and the, you know, stuff going on around doesn't get to me sometimes it does but i don't really tune into that frequency unless you know i need to check in on what's going on and i don't allow that frequency to govern me i do know that as a human coming to this earth with you know life stuff that happened to me early childhood whatever you know growing up we all have some kind of baggage so i do know that for me, the type of baggage I had, which would really made me feel like an outsider because I came from a really sort of unusual uh, background, being that my name is Aura, my parents were hippies, and nobody else was in regular society, right, except for in those small groups that I grew up in. So I knew that I didn't really have, I didn't fit in, and I had different belief systems than a lot of people. So I know that the tools that have been brought to us by Buddha and Siddhartha Buddha by, by that particular master, that particular enlightened master are very, very practical tools for use in our everyday lives that really do help transcend and overcome problems and limitations. This is why meditation is so powerful and breathing is so powerful. And I could get into a whole lot about the, you know, even the science of the light that comes from the sun being a particle and a wave and how prana is the, is the particle of light. And when we breathe, we do what's called ujjayi breath. We absorb the prana into our bodies and into our systems, and it fuels our energy body, our aura. So there is actual science behind that. And in fact, there are declassified documents from the CIA that validate it. The CIA actually admitted that these things are real. They actually admit auras, energy fields, astral projection. They're saying these things are real. So I will be doing a video on what that do those documents say. They're a little complicated. They're a little, you know, government-like in the way they're written, but they definitely validate all these ideas. So the point here is that beingness is havingness, but you can't havingness, you can't have your havingness without your beingness first. So being, being in a state of positive energy and, and which means that it really positive energy and feeling good and being in alignment in your physical body, your physical energy body is just having an absence of other things there, stress, obstacles, problems, things that don't belong there. So we, um, can all get there, but sometimes it takes a little work. And that's what these things like breathing techniques are good for. Okay. And they're very, very powerful. Um, but that is what beingness is really all about. And I personally find the teachings of Siddhartha. And as I was having that conversation with this guy, some other conversation come up, came up about Siddhartha being the person on earth who had done the most work to help, um, people to break through and release the obstacles from the veil of forgetfulness that we all go through in our life reincarnation cycle. Now I believe in reincarnation. I see past lives. I've remembered my own past lives all my life. I've had memories of places that, you know, I, I, I that weren't here. Right. <laughs> and, um, I've done a lot of work with people talking to them on past lives. I've also done a lot of past life regression work myself as an adult, as a, you know, seeker on my own path and have come to much deeper understandings. There's a lot more to this past life thing than, you know, but the thing is we are here on planet earth. We are basically, our souls are programmed to forget from one lifetime to another. 
if we were not programmed in that way, if we did not have to go through that veil of forget, forgetfulness, we would have perfect memory. Those of us who were scientists and have, you know, artistic creations we've made in the past would remember, hey, I carved the Michelangelo, you know, <laughs> like I remember doing that in another lifetime. So, and there are people out there who did that sort of, who, who we do have the same souls reincarnating over and over again. And I've run into some of them um, in my travels on this earth. I ran into um, the soul that was, um, uh, I'm kind of blank now. I'm totally going to blank. Freud. I ran into the soul that was Sigmund Freud. Yes, I didn't like him in this lifetime and I don't like his writings. Um, I ran into some, uh, just a few. There have been a few. So, you know, this happens, right? We do run into people. We do, we do have these memories, this collective energy, but the veil of forgetfulness has caused us to forget who we were on this earth, who we were before we got to this earth, our greater spiritual powers. I mean, even Jesus said, there's not one among you who cannot do the things that I have done as he's walking on water. So Jesus is telling you that all of us have this powerful, enlightened spiritual energy that we can draw to ourselves if we can break through the programming that we have been uh the the veil of forgetfulness the the sort of technologies on earth that have put us through the um amnesia uh process as we reincarnate so that we don't remember who we are we don't remember how many dimensions of power we have we don't remember how easy it would be for us to to manifest, to just create a world like the earth. Our souls have that kind of power, but of course we don't remember because we've come here and told ourselves that we're coming, you know, so here we are on earth, we're all trapped on earth until we can lift the veil of forgetfulness. That is what the enlightenment is about. That is what the spiritual awakening is about. It's about lifting the veil of forgetfulness and remembering who and what we are. Not because someone's told me, hey, you're powerful. Okay, I'm powerful. I know I can do this. Um, if only I could believe it. It's not that. It's not because someone tells you. It's not an idea. It's a knowing. Okay, that's what beingness is. Beingness is knowing. And these techniques, these tools that have been brought to us by you know, through the Buddhist teachings and the Ayurvedic type of teachings are very powerful for helping us to do that. They are the most powerful ones on the earth to help us break through that veil of forgetfulness and help us to remember who we are. That's the only way out of this prison planet is to remember and to break past the limitations. That's really, there's only one way out. That's also why there's so much intensive uh, agenda towards dumbing us down and taking us down a notch because we're about to go up a notch <laughs> and there's a lot of forces on this earth the dark ones don't want that to happen they don't want the collective energy on earth to poof break free and go up an entire dimension at, at least because that's what's coming right we're all who are able to tap into the state of beingness we're gonna rise above the uh, control grid of the 3D reality and we're going to go up to the fifth dimension. We're going to go up to the place where we're living out of a state of love. When we're choosing things and living in a place from fear, all we manifest is more of that and we lock ourselves down into that 3D grid, which is now trying to take us down even deeper and lower into the thir third dimension where there's like literally almost no consciousness where we don't have to think ourselves at all because digital devices will do it for us. So that's not what we want. We want to um, go to a place of higher frequency, greater amount of love and greater amount of memory of who and what we are. That is really the way out. So, and it's also going to coincidentally allow you to draw all the synchronicities, all the things that you need to you. It's not about having the money to do such and such. It's about having the beingness to attract the things that are needed to get you to the next place. And it's very popular for people to think, you know, I can just, you know, think happy thoughts and then I'm going to be 
in the law of attraction and I'm going to draw things to me. And it's, that's an oversimplification. I mean, I've drawn many things to myself. I mean, we all do. Everybody does. Everyone draws everything they have in their, into their lives, but I've like literally won things, right? I was in a course and I won this $5,000 course that he was selling. And, um, and then I went up on stage and did a little dance, like, woohoo, I won. And I remember when, you know, he, they passed out these papers and they're like, speaking of winning, put a comment down below, you could win. But when they passed out the papers and he said, write, you know, your name on it. So you can, so to go up and know he's going to pull the, the name out. And, um, I remember writing my name out and thinking, I could just win, you know, I could just be the person who wins. And I passed it and I felt really good. And then it went up and I won. He called my name. I was like, woohoo. So that could be you, right? It's just, it can be that simple, honestly. So I am just saying this not to toot my horn, but to tell you guys that, that it is possible to put yourself there, right? It's not as hard as we sometimes make it out to be. However, when there is obstacle that comes up when there are issues that is evidence or that's information for us to go oh great now there's something i can work on to clear out of the way right there's always you know unless you have unless you're already an enlightened master right and walking on water there's still some work to do right for all of us definitely i have work to do and i am doing it you know i have a i have a breathing practice i do three times a day um those kinds of things do help. They really help. And they help bring us into that beingness that allows for the havingness of the things that we want that bring in the joy and beauty of life. So that's it. That's what I wanted to kind of talk about really quickly. I also um, wanted to, uh, yeah, so once again, I'm just going to say you can win right? Go ahead and make a comment, make sure that you're a subscriber and then you make a comment down below and I will be picking two winners in the horoscope on Monday, Monday on when I do the horoscope on Monday. So you can comment on any of my videos. It doesn't matter. So that's it. Thanks a lot. And I will look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye-bye.